This video details the installation of a Westerbeek 30C in place of a Westerbeek 30B that was in our 2001 Gemini 105MC. First step required cutting down the bell housing on the Westerbeek 30C. The 30C is wider than the 30B and would not fit in the engine bay so below here we see a piece of aluminum that was cut off with a sawzall off of the rear bell housing. The engine was then sanded down and it was primed. After the primer dried it was painted. Next uh, spacers were made for the new motor mounts. Uh, I also screwed those spacers to the motor mounts so we were sliding the motor around to mark the new holes that would be easier without the spacers sliding off of the motor mounts. 2x12s were laid on the uh, cockpit floor of the Gemini. Uh, that happens to be a chain hoist that is connected to the engine hoist in the cockpit. Plastic from an old shed someone threw out was laid on the floor so once the engine was pulled out we can slide it over to the starboard side. We were hoping that then we could lift it with the boom from the starboard side but that did not happen. We wound up sliding the engine back reconnecting it to the engine hoist laying 2x12s over the engine hatch and then placing the engine back over the engine hatch and sliding it over to the starboard side. Once there the boom was able to reach the engine and hoist it out. Here we see ropes that are connecting from the forward cleats through the hatches and those lines are holding the engine hoist from flipping over backwards since it doesn't have the legs in the front that would normally be used in an automotive application something was needed to stop it from flipping over. This worked very well and the lines hardly stretched. Here we see a come along. This is used to retract the boom of the engine hoist. So why the chain fall is picking up the engine, I could use the come along to slide the boom backwards and ease the engine out of the engine compartment. This worked out fantastic. There was no issues at all with the engine coming out. Once the engine was out, sanded and repainted the engine bay. The only thing removed from the engine to remove it was the alternator and the heat exchanger end caps. We left the heat exchanger in. It did not need to be removed to get it out of the engine bay. And here we see the new engine being lifted up off the trailer and going in basically the reverse of taking the old engine out. Here we see an empty hole in the bottom right hand corner. New holes had to be drilled for the engine mounts. The engine mounts are further forward than the engine mounts for the 30B. So new engine bolts had to be tapped, holes had to be tapped for the bolts to restrain the rear of the engine. This was done by sliding the engine right and left. It was still very difficult to get in there to drill and tap the holes but it was still possible without pulling the engine all the way back out. Had great difficulty trying to get the engine aligned. Despite all efforts I could not get it any better than 30 thousandths in the uh, vertical plane and because I could not get the alignment correct I had a huge amount of vibration at the rear of the transmission and rattling noises is this next video is going to show. So 
left with no alternatives, I obtained an SKF laser shaft alignment tool. This tool uses lasers and it clamps to the transmission shaft and it also clamps to the sonic hub. That way it can measure in the horizontal and vertical planes the amount of height for each motor mount needs to be moved to get the motor and the transmission aligned correctly. During the course of using this tool, I determined that I ran out of space in the front of the engine and I could not get the engine low enough. So the spacer that will be shown soon had to be removed from the front of the engine. In order to get that back out, we had to take the front engine mounts back off unscrew the spacers from the motor mounts and then reinstall the mounts back on the front of the engine. Here we see the laser tool measuring in the horizontal elevation. It measures at 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and nine o'clock. So the tool has to be rotated through 180 degrees. In order to do this I had to take the muffler and the exhaust hoses out which in this photo you can see to the right hand side that the muffler has been removed so that the tool can be spun. And again here's the motor mount we had to take off the front, we had to take that spacer out that the motor wouldn't go low enough. Another Gemini owner needed those spacers on all four engine mounts, we did not on our Gemini. Here's the tool showing 0 .06 and 0 .08. If you look closely you can see it shows an angle and it also shows offset so it looks at two things at once. So we were able to dial in the engine mounts while we were watching those numbers change live. It was a huge time saver and we achieved a set of precision that we could have never done with a feeler gauge. Here's the engine running after alignment. There's no more shake, no more rattling, and the original spec is it has to be within one thousandth of an inch or 0.25 millimeters. And as we saw on a display on that alignment tool, I was able to get it much, much better than 0.25 millimeters. And with no vibration present, it was definitely worthwhile investing in this tool. Fuel line sizes were different in the 30C. They have each fuel line, the return, and the input line were both one size up. Some fittings and hoses had to be changed. Another issue we ran into was that the shift cable was pushing the shift lever on the transmission further than it needed to go. This was causing the throttle and the shift lever to bind in the forward and the reverse position. Fortunately, we found that the ball was removable on the transmission shift lever and we removed that ball and stuck it to the outer part of the arm and not resolved the throw issue. Was it worth it in the end? I think so. We have a low hour engine, it's running nice and smooth and with the addition of a uh, serpentine belt kit that should keep down the belt dust and the serpentine belt should last at least three times longer than the standard belt. So I think we're going to have a lot of enjoyment with our Gemini for years to come.